episode is brought to you by Meet Cute Box. Meet Cute Box creates monthly themed date night boxes. Each box is handmade with care based on your membership profile with up to four items plus a love-inspired date night. What I love about Meet Cute Box is that inside every box, there are unique items gathered from local businesses around the world and packed together with a new theme every month, giving you a new surprise to enjoy. Memberships start at only $29.99 per month with each box valued up to $100. To join today, visit meetcutebox.com. That's meetcutebox.com to receive a handmade box as early as next week. Meet Cute Box, the membership crate for you and your partner. Funny how. Come here, come here though. Yeah, he's crazy, see? Who are you? We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Are you ready? Oh, hey there. What's going on, friends? Uh, so it's it's been quite some time since I did an episode, uh, about a week and a half, so uh, sorry about that, Megumi. Uh, but I will say I had to talk about this. Um, I talk a lot about health, wellness. You know, lately I've interviewed, uh, I had a chance to interview a couple friends, and, you know, we've talked about a lot of different topics, but this came out uh, back in March, and I had to talk about it. It's from the Hindu, the Hindu.com resource for a lot of different stuff, like opinionated stuff, business, sports, entertainment. But it's, it's a pretty cool uh, site. But they actually came out uh, with an article that said, uh, recently scientists found uh, microplastics in our blood for the first time ever. And if you don't know, that's for everything we're doing to the planet. You know, I've, I've talked about that numerous times on, on this podcast. I'm not going to dive too much into it now, but I, I wanted to kind of combine a couple topics in this episode, and that is the food we're eating. Uh, Hundreds and thousands of us don't know that we're eating food with microplastics, and whether you're vegan or not doesn't matter. So at at some rate, you're eating something that was in the ocean or something that's in the ground. So you have to think to yourself, okay, well, if microplastics are in the ocean and they're seeping into our food, like fish that we eat, uh, is it possible that cows are ingesting plastic? Uh, even if they're grass-fed, you know, is that possible? Sure, it's possible. So I wanted to talk about that, but also, too, I wanted to mention in this episode from birth and how you're raised, uh, even though I was raised, I think, very well, and, you know, more often not a lot of people that aren't really privileged to have uh, a good household, but the whole point of this is what we eat is a very serious thing, and I would even challenge to say it's the most serious thing that we do on a daily basis because you know working is important of course working out that's important sure but the food we eat is our fuel it's the energy it's what it's how we survive you know same thing with water water and food is probably the most important thing that you're doing on a daily basis and what you're putting in your body is either going to allow you to live longer or kill you faster and i don't think we think about that enough so this article really kind of shot off a couple ideas that I want to talk about. One being the microplastics that we found in the food. So I'm going to reference this article and we'll talk about that for a few minutes. But then also the advertising that is embedded in us as children. The marketing, the fantastic marketing of fast food. There's a study from the University of Michigan that I want to talk briefly about where uh, this professor actually did a study with, I think it was 180 students. I'll reference it in this podcast, but I'll leave all the links in the podcast notes, but you can check all this stuff out for yourself and read these articles. But we're going to talk about food in general today and how important it is that we not only eat the right foods, but we know what's going into our food. And that I think is the most important thing. So, and you know, speaking of which, I mean, I'm very cautious, as you guys know, I'm, I'm vegan, I eat primarily plant based, but uh, you know, the, the foods that I can't, or excuse me, the nutrition that I can't get from my foods, I get from supplementation. And there's a lot of great supplements that I use. You know, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably see me post about, you know, Perfect Keto is one of my favorite companies. You know, obviously they're a supporter of the podcast. So, you know, if you go to perfectketo.com, you're going to help the podcast by putting in the code the Berardo. You're going to get 20% off your order. But the reason I love Perfect Keto is because no matter what diet you're on, they have supplementation for you. You know, things that you're not really getting from your food anymore because food as a whole is just naturally becoming 
less nutritious for us because of all the additives and preservatives we're putting in to these foods. It's becoming extremely toxic for our body. You know, now we have to eat more food, correct foods, by the way, to get those nutrients, to get those vitamins. So supplementation is huge, which is why I use Perfect Keto for pretty much uh, everything, whether it's a snack, whether it's uh, my, you know, collagen that I put in my coffee. I love that because they have uh, vanilla and salted caramel flavor and collagen is just great for skin and uh, nail growth and tons of other benefits. And then of course, super greens, which they have a l- they have a lemon super greens, which I really love. I just put that in some water, mix that up, squeeze a little bit of extra lemon in there. And I take that at least once or twice a day. Um, and that's just great just to get all the veggies that you uh, typically can't intake on a daily basis, right? Because you need all these nutrients, but who wants to have broccoli five times a day, right? That's what's cool about these greens is you can just mix that in some water, take one one scoop, throw in some water, mix it, and you get up to 26 fruits and veggies in the one cup. So uh, you can check all that out at perfectketo.com and just use the code the Barardo. You know, again, these are all the type of topics that it, it's not fun to talk about. It, it's better to talk about what happened on Jimmy Fallon last night and the new movies that are coming out. And it's better to talk about these fun and exciting topics. Talking about food kind of sucks. It's boring. And I get it. But again, I don't think from birth, I don't think any of us know, and it doesn't mean you have bad parents. We're just not treating food like it's supposed to be. We're not giving the food the respect it deserves, which is what? It's what we need. You know, it's it's how we get our energy. It's 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 how we can go from day to day. But then also, you know, contrast to that, you don't need to eat it every two hours either. So that's important to note as well, where you don't have to eat food all the time and you shouldn't be snacking all the time because too much food could lead to obesity and then obesity could lead to diabetes and, you know, various different diseases, including chronic disease and inflammation, all types of stuff. So again, I'm no doctor. You can research this stuff yourself, but the fact that we don't take it more seriously very disturbing because, you know, when you hear something like this where science or scientists are finding microplastics in blood for the first time ever, I mean, that's crazy. And I'm going to get into this article real quick. So half of the blood samples that they took shown traces of PET plastic uh, widely used in, in making drink bottles. Scientists have discovered microplastics in human blood for the first time ever. The particles could also be making their way into our organs. The tiny pieces of uh, almost invisible plastic have already been found almost everywhere else on Earth, from the deepest oceans to the highest mountains, as well as in the air, soil, and our food chain. A Dutch study published in the Environmental International Journal on Thursday, and this was back in March, uh, blood samples from 22 anonymous healthy volunteers found microplastics in nearly 80% of them. That's crazy. So half the blood samples show traces of PET plastic, which, of course, as we mentioned, was used in drink bottles. Nearly a third of them had polystyrene, I believe I'm butchering that, uh, which is used for disposable food containers and other products. So I'm assuming, you know, different like to-go containers and things like that. This is a quote actually from uh, Dick Vethok, um, which is an an ecotoxologist at the University of Amsterdam. Uh, He said, for the first time ever, we have actually been able to detect and quantify microplastics in human blood. This proof that we have plastics in our body, calling for further research to investigate this uh, on how it could be impacting our overall health. Where is this going into your body? Can it be eliminated, excreted, or is it retained in certain organs, accumulating, maybe even able to pass? Oof, this is scary. Maybe even those plastics are able to pass through the blood into the brain. See, that's terrifying. I got chills just reading that. And, you know, this is, (laughs) there's so much more here uh, that you could read. It's a a really interesting article. It's only like a three-minute read. But um, the whole study itself contributes to the evidence that we actually have plastic um, in in our blood. And that to me is just, not only is it a little bit terrifying, if you're doing everything right out there, like I, I like to think I'm doing some things right and I'm trying to get better every day on treating my body better and the environment better. But, you know, some people out there, a lot of people are trying to do what's right and do the best things. And even if you don't use plastic and use a Yeti cup everywhere you go and you fill it up and you're doing all the microplastics are still out there from everyone else. I mean, there's, you know, what, 7 billion people on this planet? Something crazy? So, 
we can't control everybody and I don't think it's ever going to be fully controlled, but I think it's up to each individual to understand not only just what they're eating, but what we're doing to the environment, because this is going to be detrimental to not just you and me. I mean, we probably won't even die of this, right? We won't. Most likely we won't die of this. Um, and maybe if our kids, kids won't even die of this, but you know, our great grandkids, you know, it's very possible that we're creating an environment to where they won't be able to fish anymore. They won't be able to eat anything out of the ocean. They won't be able to eat anything out of the ground. Everything's going to be made in a lab because everything's so contaminated with plastics and, you know, with other things. So we have to take that into account. It's not far fetched. I mean, you look at, just look at where we are now, right? Like how do we get our food typically? Well, there's less fish in the ocean than there ever has been because there's a, a huge demand for fish. So now we have to factory farm fish. Think about that. We have to create and manage fish and make our own because there's not enough fish in the ocean to eat. It's mind boggling when you think about it. And, you know, we've only been doing this thing for, I don't know, 100 years, 150 years we've been We've been fishing like this. So in a hundred years, we've depleted the ocean for fish. <laughs> and now we have to create our own fish. Same thing with cows and, and pigs. And, you know, we can go through factory farming. But, you know, the reason factory farming exists is because we're building so many cities on, on land that we should be doing agriculture. And we should be, you know, managing crops. And we should be doing the right things to feed the planet. But there's just so many fucking people that, you know, we're eating rather all these foods so now we have to create uh these factory farms and you know it's just it's wicked man you don't and not only that but you also got to think to yourself okay so where did this start right like how come on a daily basis we're not focusing more on the food we're eating why is that you know is it because we weren't raised the right way i don't know i don't think that's it um is it maybe what they're teaching us in school maybe that's possible but I think a, a big portion of it is just shitty food companies are just really good at marketing. I think that's that's just the bottom line. You know, even stepping away from the microplastics in our food for a second, because that's terrifying. But so let's say there's a group of food that you eat and it's not contaminated with plastics or anything else. Is it good for you, food? Are you eating the correct foods? And I think we all could agree that if you pull a poll in America which we kind of already know this, but uh, the standard American diet, as it's known, um, about 70 plus percent of America is obese. And out of those obese Americans, a third of their meals per day, you can look this up, a third of their meals per day is fast food. So why, why is that? Well, is it cheaper? Yeah, for sure. Fast food, no doubt, is is the cheaper cheaper route so of course a vast majority of us americans are either middle class or low class and you know some of us struggle paycheck to paycheck right so are we going to be making our own organic fucking grass-fed 20 dollar a pound meat oh, probably not for sure so then what's the alternative well the alternative is just go to fast food chain is it worth cutting back on other things if you can and eating a little bit more healthy I think most people that are in that situation where they're not able to afford expensive food, quote unquote expensive food, even though it's really not, we'll get into that in a sec, but the people that actually do fast food a lot, it's because they want to save money. I think a lot of people would agree with that or they're trying to hurry, right? They're on the go or they travel a lot or whatever. But now the problem becomes, okay, so what's more important, your time or your health slash your money or your health? What's more important? Well, a lot of people, I think, would choose money and time. And there's a part of me that's like, I get it for sure. You know, what's the, the longevity of life, I think, is what we're talking about here. The longevity of life, longevity of, longevity of earth. It's hard to see that far ahead. So when you go to Taco Bell and when you go to McDonald's and you see all these cheap foods, you're like, fuck it. I'm just going to put it in my face. But you're not realizing the repercussions that this food is having on your body. And that's what we kind of have to wrap our, our head around because they're really great at marketing. Like, I'm a marketing guy. They're pros. They're the best. And in fact, there's a really interesting article here that I mentioned uh, earlier, how fast food advertisements 
get under the skin without us even knowing. This is from the University of Michigan. Um, the psychology department put this together, but it reads, for years, academics across the world have studied the effects of fast food advertising. Um, with nearly one in five school school-aged children in the United States qualifying as obese. So one out of five children in the United States qualify as obese. Let that sink in for a second. What a disservice. Because not only, I'm going off script here, what a disservice we're doing to children. Like, I can't wait to have a kid. I don't know if he's going to be the healthiest. He's going to make his own decisions. But I know I'm going to teach him the difference between fast food cooking at home, eating at restaurants. Like, he's going to know the difference. Is McDonald's going to be good? Is he going to love it? Maybe. So I'm going to I'm gonna make him great food at home, and he's going to understand the benefits of having that good food. And then he can also have fast food. And I'm going to let him decide, of course, as he gets or she gets older. But the whole idea in, behind this thing is they don't know the repercussions. You know, I look at it very, very similar to, like, as you get older, you don't know the repercussions of spending money on stupid stuff. You know, it's very similar. Like we're not understanding that if you get a new iPhone every single year and you're spending $1,500 or $2,000 on that, but you can't pay your rent on time, you should probably not get the new iPhone. But we don't understand that. We don't think about that because these companies are so great at marketing. They're so good at telling us what we need, but you don't need anything except shelter food, and water. That's what you need. So everything else is a want. And the faster we kind of teach ourselves this, we can teach others like children here. So that way, one out of five school-aged children in the U.S. are obese. I'm, am, I, am I blowing this out of proportion because they're going to be obese, so that means they're going to be made fun of? No. I think we're living in a world now where, quote-unquote, fat shaming is horrible. To do, but I think it's important to tell, especially children, what they're doing to themselves. You know, let them eat what they want, sure, yeah. But then in 15, 20 years, as they get older and they develop, you know, these eating habits that aren't good, um, they're going to have chronic diseases. They're going to become obese and, and be in that 70% of the population of the country to where you can't function and do things on a daily basis. You can't be healthy. You know, being healthy and staying active and being fit, you don't have to have a six-pack and work out every day. But you shouldn't be obese. You should not be overweight because that's unhealthy. That's unhealthy not just for yourself, but it, it's going to lower your lifespan, um, which is going to affect your friends and, and your family or loved ones because you're going to have less time on this earth. Um, I mean, there's just there's so many negatives to, to being obese. Fuck the image for a second. It's not about looking pretty. If that's something that's important to you, great. Yeah, don't be obese. But you should not be obese because of the massive negative side effects that come with it. There's way more cons than there is pros. The only pros is you could eat whatever you want. But when you understand what is in food, like this fast food, you know, these foods that you're intaking with microplastics, once you understand all the situations of this and all the different scenarios and what you're actually eating and what you're consuming and what it's doing to you, if you really educate yourself, it doesn't matter how good it tastes. Like I used to smoke cigarettes. It was fantastic. It was so good. I don't smoke it anymore. Not because I don't want to. Same thing with alcohol. I love me a glass of wine with some pasta. Forget it. Alcohol itself is a toxin and it's, it's ruining your body and me. I have to be really, really careful because I've done... I've had a lot of stuff done and I'm trying to, you know, kind of press the reset button and just really take care of myself, like all in, doing everything right uh, as best I can. And I might get hit by a truck tomorrow. You hear that stupid analogy all the time. Yeah, of course. But what does that mean? You're going to go, are you going to go commit murder tonight because you might get hit by a truck tomorrow? Like, what are we talking about here? That doesn't make any sense. Just because there's a possibility a small possibility that you might not live till tomorrow, that doesn't mean to waste today. You should treat every day as if it is a gift because it is. And if you were to win the lottery and you know were, you were to win a million bucks, I think a vast majority of people would do good with that money. You know, I really don't think if you get a million bucks, you're not going to go off and do stupid things and commit crimes, are you? 
No, you're going to do the right things. You're going to eat the nicest restaurants. You're going to get the best house. You're going to treat yourself the best. Well, dude, you're getting a gift every day by living. <laughs> Forget about the money for a second. It doesn't even matter. And I think even in 20 years, it's not even going to matter because it's all going to be digital crypto shit. So fuck cash for a second. Don't think about that. Think about what you're doing to your health and the effect that you're having on young children now. You know, because based off this article here from the University of Michigan, that one in five, one in five school-aged children are obese in America, they did this study at the University of Michigan. So they wanted to figure out how TV commercials and product placements are actually affecting our unhealthy lifestyles. But, you know, they also say, well, okay, so if you watch a commercial for a Big Mac today, do you immediately go to McDonald's and pick up a drive through um, The answer is no. But what it does to our brains is what they're studying. So the the ripple effect, so to speak, of watching these commercials and these ads and seeing these product placements. So at the University of Michigan, associate professor Ashley Gerhardt runs the Food and Addiction Science and Treatment, also known as the FAST Lab. Uh, she's currently con conducting a study of 180 teenagers and to see what happens with the quote unquote reward section of the brain uh, while they're viewing ads and how these ads kind of get under our skin. Uh, she also showed three kinds of commercials to these teenagers, one that's unhealthy fast food, one that is healthier fast food, and a control commercial for cell phones only. Uh, when teenagers are seeing fast food commercials, it seems that it's activating the reward centers of the brain more effectively than the other types of advertisements. The professor said to HuffPost, about her preliminary findings, which she is about to publish this paper, the teenagers that are showing the greatest reward activation of the brain seems to be at greater risk um, as they're gaining weight over time. But it's hard, of course, to uh, defend or to justify these studies because it's uh, an unconscious process, meaning we're not really doing it on purpose. You see these ads and just subconsciously you're, you're soaking up this info and then when you're really hungry or it's on the go, it's there already, right? It's kind of like the same analogy of when people say, I'm craving something. <laughs> You're not really craving anything. You know that, right? Like unless it's actually a nutritious food, like physically your body's not craving it. Like you might be craving alcohol, but the only reason you're craving alcohol is because you've had alcohol for so long. And then when you go without it, that's called withdrawals. It also happens to crackheads. So that's what craving is, right? Like you don't actually crave something. Um, it's just, it's all about habits. For example, let's say if you craved Reese's Pieces. Don't get me wrong. Reese's is my favorite candy. And hold on, let me start over. Reese's Cups. I don't know why I said pieces. Psh, fuck that. Go with the cups if you're going to do anything. But if you crave Reese's Cups, if you crave it, what if it never existed? Would you still crave it? No, of course not. Because it doesn't exist. What if it never existed? Like you, it, It's not a thing. Would your body physically crave it at your age right now? No, the only reason it craves it is because you ate it, you like the taste, and your brain's like, bro, give me that. Put that in my face again. That's the only reason why you're craving it. It is all mental because your brain, you could teach your brain a lot of different things. I used to not be vegan. Now I'm vegan. Do I like meat? Yes. Do I crave meat? No. Did I used to? Yes. When I was transitioning from eating meat to not eating meat, of course I was craving meat. But I just, I kept in the routine of not eating it. And eventually, just like anything else, routines will get you out of those cravings. Cravings aren't a thing. Get that out of your head. You need to train your, your brain to get out of this lifestyle. And look, I mean, it's happening with our kids right now, man. You know, one out of five kids. That means that whether they're watching TV commercials at home, they're seeing it in school, they're watching it on their phones, you as the parent, you're eating it. Something's happening to where they don't understand the difference between fast food and healthy food. You know, these companies, every company at the grocery store, even these vegan companies that are creating their own meat and all that stuff. Listen, I, I've had them from time to time. I get it. Me, I am. Let me try to eat as whole food as I possibly can, meaning I'm going to shop on the outer aisle, go to the produce section, make my own food at home. You see me if you follow me on social media. We make our own food every single night. You know, occasionally we'll eat out, and if we do, we try to eat as healthy as we can, only because I know how many people have touched that fucking food at a restaurant. 
So we try to eat as healthy as we can, but there's only so much you could do. And what you do on a daily basis, if you have little ones or if you have friends or family that are also watching you, they're going to do the same things you do. So we have to create a good example for everybody. (laughs) Because you know what's funny about this is it's all supply and demand. It's all supply and demand. The reason why there's so many fast food chains and why you see McDonald's and Starbucks and Taco Bell and they're popping up left and right and Chick-fil-A and all that. And no, Chick-fil-A is not healthier. Yeah, it's healthier than McDonald's, sure. But you know what's really healthy? A salad, okay? That's what's healthier. So quit saying that. Chick-fil-A is healthier. It's still fast food. It's still, you don't know where that chicken is, man. How many people touch that? But, you know, we have to get to this point to where we're okay with sacrificing a little bit of the good taste of stuff and trying to do what we can to, you know, make healthy foods taste good. But what these other, like, quote-unquote, vegan, plant-based companies are, it's still processed food. Maybe it's healthier, maybe it's not. We won't know until we do some real studies. But the best way to get the healthiest food for you and your body is to see a professional, number one. But also, the less people that can touch your food, the better. At a fast food joint, if you know that process, let's say McDonald's has their own farm, which they don't, but let's say they do, and raising their own cows, then they slaughter it, cut it up, make it fresh right there, and they throw it on the plate. That's not how it works. There's probably two dozen people that touch that food and handle that food before it even gets on a truck to go to the local McDonald's. And then, of course, someone that's getting paid minimum wage is making your food, throwing it in a very thin little cover, wrapping it up, tossing it in a paper bag, and giving it to you through a window. It's probably not the best for you. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that. Is it fast and cheap? Yes, of course. But what if it didn't exist? Would you live? What would you live off of? Act as if they don't exist. Because again, like I was saying before, it's all supply and demand. So the more we eat that shit, the more locations are going to pop up. It's like real estate. Look at what's happening right now, this bubble that's about to pop. The reason it's like this is because people keep buying houses when it's expensive. If everyone tomorrow decided not to buy a house and there was a six-month ban, guess what? Rates would go down. Prices would go down. Yeah, interest rates are low, but that doesn't matter when the prices of houses are quadruple what they were 10 years ago. And they're just going to keep getting bigger and more expensive. And that's that's what's happening with, you know, everything. I mean, look at inflation, right? So it's all supply and demand. So the more we feed, we're the consumer. We're the most important thing. So the more we feed these big corporate chains, the more they're going to fuck us over. And they're going to put more preservatives in our food. And they're going to do whatever they can to feed us a little bit and make a shit ton of money. Because that's what's happening here. They would have to study you and me and everyone else on this planet. They would have to study us for 30 years to prove that their food is bad for us. Because they're going to blame it on everything else. You know, unless you eat McDonald's every single day and you pull a Super Size Me documentary and you do that for a year straight and then you found someone that didn't do that for a year straight and they did the exact same thing, they lived in the same city, they lived in the same... If you had twins that did the opposite of everything, that's the only way we would be able to know. So it's going to be hard to track this. So the point of all that is these companies are not going anywhere. These multi-billion dollar fast food chains and all this shitty food that you see at the grocery store, it's not going anywhere. So what do we have to do? Well, quit buying it. Quit buying that food and they're going to have to change. They're going to have to make things healthier. Look at what we've done with poor Aunt Jemima. She's not on the bottle anymore. I don't even know what it's called. It's like called like something farms syrup. Like, did you know that? But that was you guys. That was us. We changed that for the better. But my point is, though, the, the we are the consumer. We can change companies. We can flip them around. You know, I mean, here we are changing football teams, right? The Washington Redskins. Boom, we're changing names. Like why? We could do this with every single company out there. Let's get to work. Let's start eating healthier and demand that we eat healthier because companies will have to listen because you're the ones buying the product. We're the consumer. Without us, they're nothing. And let's change your eating habits so we can all be healthier and live longer. That's what's exciting about it. I hope you guys took something out of this. I know it was kind of a lot. (laughs) 
sorry, I'll go on like a tangent about this food because, you know, I'm really passionate about it only because uh, I've gone through a lot of BS, especially in the last, you know, six, seven, eight years. And uh, I've learned a lot, you know, and it's, uh, it's just kind of, it's very disappointing to see all these things that are going on that we can control. It's not like we're having a shortage of water. I mean, these are things that they're very controllable right now, especially the thing with the microplastics. We don't understand what we're doing, not just to our bodies, but if we're polluting the planet and the earth, then everything is going to affect the food that we eat and the water that we drink. And, uh, you know, it's happening right now with soil. You can you can look that up uh, at savesoil.org, I believe. But there's so many crazy things that are happening just at the soil where now we're having an issue like with agriculture. You know, and this is all because of the food and the BS that we're eating because we're eating too much and we're eating too much of the bad stuff. Everything we do put in the ground is not good, is not beneficial. So if we want our species to grow and to thrive, then uh, we got to get better. I'm here to hopefully give you a little knowledge. And uh, I'd love to know more about this stuff. Again, I'm no expert. I'm just reading articles from experts and just kind of talking about my past. But if there's anybody out there listening that wants to be on the podcast, you know what to do. Uh, go to my site, thebarato.com, uh, or DM me on the gram. But I, I love to have people on that are experts at this stuff. Uh, I'm definitely open to interviewing anybody and everybody. But thank you guys for listening out there. Really appreciate you. I know I've been kind of busy. Uh, the wife and I, if you haven't realized by following me on social, we did start our own company, which is cool. Uh, and we both work full time, so we're kind of doing this uh, additionally to work. So right at 5 p.m. when we get off work, boom, we're hitting up uh, our business. You know, the business is Meet Cute Box. It's a subscription box for couples. I'm even going to leave you here with this with an ad that we're running on the Forensic Files podcast, which uh, it's hosted by this girl, Courtney. That's so great. She gets over uh, 10,000 downloads a month, or excuse me, an episode. And she's awesome. So she's running this ad uh, for us a couple times this month. But I hope you guys will check out the website, uh, meetcutebox.com, and I hope you will subscribe. Take a listen to this ad real quick. I will let you guys go. But as always, thank you for tuning into the Barato Podcast. Uh, much love. Appreciate you. And we will see you next week on another episode. Peace. Episode is brought to you by Meet Cute Box. Meet Cute Box creates monthly themed date night boxes. Each box is handmade with care based on your membership profile with up to four items plus a love-inspired date night. What I love about Meet Cute Box is that inside every box, there are unique items gathered from local businesses around the world and packed together with a new theme every month, giving you a new surprise to enjoy. Memberships start at only $29.99 per month, with each box valued up to $100. To join today, visit meetcutebox.com. That's meetcutebox.com to receive a handmade box as early as next week. Meet Cute Box, the membership crate for you and your partner.